Okay, we're going to be looking at gas exchange and the respiratory system, you could call it. So take a look if this really ugly lung, actually if, you, if I didn't tell you it was a lung, you might think it was raisin bread and accidentally slice into it and take a bite. That's pretty nasty. This is what a lung looks like after you've been smoking a lot. See, it's very spongy and when we do a dissection in class, you'll, you'll have an opportunity to check that out and then see how it how just how spongy it is and what happens if we put water into the tissue so uh, let's go ahead and start um, basic guiding questions why do we breathe what structures are involved in gas exchange and can you draw a picture of the respiratory system try to pause the video and see if you can even do that Okay. In general, uh, the structure, everything looks kind of like this. You probably figured out the lungs were in there. The rib cage is the rib cage is protecting your lungs. Basically, you may have heard of people breaking their ribs and the ribs going in and actually puncturing a lung. That doesn't sound like a good situation. Underneath here, you have something called a diaphragm. Um, this entire tube here is called the trachea. Don't get confused with the esophagus. The esophagus leads to the stomach that's in the digestive system. In this case, we have the trachea, which branches off into two main bronchi. A single one is called a bronchus, and the bronchi will branch off into bronchioles. And at the very end of the bronchioles, you end up with something called alveoli, which you probably are very familiar with. But we'll be looking at alveoli uh, in specific detail. You should be able to sketch this general diagram. Okay, three words, three terms, I should say, gas exchange, ventilation, and cellular respiration. You have to be careful not to use them interchangeably. They are very specific, and uh, the IB will ask you uh, to make sure that you understand the main differences. The term, so you should avoid saying breathing, okay? Breathing is actually closest to, you could, I guess you could say ventilation. But you should try to avoid the word breathing and then talk instead about ventilation. Ventilation is simply is simply replacing the stale air that's in your lungs with fresh air, basically. Um, when you need to ventilate the room because it's getting stuffy, so you open the windows to allow fresh air to come in. That's what ventilation is about. Gas exchange is more specific down at the alveoli level. So if you remember back in the diagram, at the end of the bronchioles, you reach these little pockets called alveoli. That's where a lot of the good stuff happens. So all that fresh air you brought in is going to eventually reach these alveoli. And you can see the alveoli in the background here. They're surrounded by a bunch of blood capillaries. Around here is where the oxygen is going to move from inside the alveoli across a very thin membrane and then into the capillaries and where carbon dioxide is going to move from the capillaries in to the little pockets and then you can go ahead and breathe that stuff out. So it's very specific. The exchange of gases happens at the alveoli level and so when we say gas exchange we're literally talking about oxygen being traded for carbon dioxide. And finally, cell respiration is a whole separate uh, game, so be careful about that. So when you're just talking about respiring, are you just talking about bringing fresh air in? Are you talking about exchanging oxygen with carbon dioxide? Are you, or are you talking about the actual process of cellular respiration, which takes place inside mitochondria involving uh, glucose and oxygen to produce sugar? Well, if you say respiration, we're going to assume you're talking about cell respiration. Cell respiration happens in mitochondria and releases ATP. Okay, In humans and most aerobic organisms, oxygen is needed and carbon dioxide is produced as the waste product. So this whole system, this respiratory system, is primarily about bringing in oxygen because we need oxygen in order to make energy in all, all of our cells combined with glucose. Okay, so you can think of these three main systems um, as one whole thing together. The digestive system brings nutrients into our bloodstream to be transported to our cells. The respiratory system brings oxygen into our bloodstream and gets transported to our cells. Uh, once the glucose and the oxygen reach the cells, then the mitochondria inside those cells can use those raw products to actually create energy which is ATP. So there's a reason for everything, and all of this has to happen for us to survive, uh, stay alive, and do every, every one of our daily tasks. Um, 
we must take in oxygen from our surroundings. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So here's another close-up diagram of what uh, alveoli actually look like. So at the end of these bronchioles and branches, you can see there's little sacs here, alveoli, and they're surrounded by capillaries. And the colors here are used to show um, high concentration of oxygen gas and low concentrations of oxygen gas. Special things about the alveoli that you need to know. There's a few adaptations. Again, how is structure related to function? Here are a few things. Each alveolus is small, which means a very large surface area overall. Um, large surface area is really important. We see this in the villi and the digestive system. Any kind of folding basically increases efficiency, so that's good. The walls are super thin, which creates a very short distance for diffusion, which is important. They're also covered by a dense network of blood capillaries that allows things to, any small gas molecules like oxygen can diffuse really quickly through the super thin wall and then be instantly transported into the blood capillaries. And those capillaries will then uh, start to, um, we're basically replenishing, replenishing the blood with fresh oxygen that is just diffused across the alveolar walls basically another important the fourth important adaptation is that uh, fluids are secreted which help to keep the alveoli uh, moist this prevents the walls from sticking so think of it more of as a, a lubricant as opposed to as opposed to a, uh, a sticky type substance it's a lubricant that keeps everything moving very smoothly and, and slipperily is that a word Anyways, so uh, being moist also increases the rate of diffusion, um, so that's important as well too. And that surface is all about diffusion, moving gases across. And finally, is this finally? The word ventilation. Remember, if I say breathing, I'd rather you use the word ventilation. This one gets a little bit tricky. I mean, you all know what happens when you breathe, right? Take a deep breath in. And I noticed some things like my rib cage moves up and out. The volume of my lungs has increased, and uh, my diaphragm, I can't, although I can't really feel it, I know it's being pushed down because the volume is increasing. <sighs> when I breathe out, I feel much more, oh, I'm kind of dizzy. Oh my goodness. When I breathe out, rib cage comes back down, the diaphragm uh, relaxes, and then you end up with a smaller volume of lungs. Interesting thing about breathing, inhaling and exhaling, is that when you breathe in, inhaling like I am right now, I'm gonna get dizzy again. When I breathe in like that, you think you are actually sucking air in. The act of sucking the air, you're not actually doing that. What you're doing when you're actually breathing in is all you're doing is you are you're, you're contracting certain muscles, so I'll go into that in a second. And what that does is it allows your lung volume to increase. When your lung volume increases, the pressure inside drops. And so the air outside your face actually will just flow down from an area of high pressure to low pressure. So you're not sucking the air in, you're just changing the volume of your lungs and the air is just rushing in automatically. So a few things that you need to know, uh, here's a quick practice question. I'm gonna pause this, but I'm gonna give you the answer in about three seconds here. So pause, try it out. Okay, kind of a weird question, but I'd be throwing some strange questions. And finally, this is gonna be a little bit confusing, some big words here, but the mechanism of ventilation. When you inhale, you need to know that the following four things happen, and they're opposite to what happens when you exhale. So I'm gonna reveal that here. Make sure you get all of this down. Here's a 3D view of the diaphragm. Is that gonna pop up? Okay, I'm going to ignore that. Oh, here we go. And it's just a YouTube video, but I guess you can see this link. Well, this is gonna be a YouTube video. Can you have a YouTube video within a YouTube video? Anyways, search for this, 3D view of diaphragm so humble. Diaphragm is a thin, dome-shaped layer of muscle and tendon that separate... That guy's got a nice voice. So check that out, 3dyoga.com. That's funny. So finally, last thing, these four particular parts here, uh, you need to understand which one's contracting and which one is relaxing. And definitely checking out this link right here. If you want to type that crazy link in or just go back 
I'll see if I can link it in the video as well. So go ahead and check that out and post any additional questions that you have. All right.